So in today's video, I'm going to discuss some of the reasons behind rejection of typical proposals. And essentially, the reason for this discussion is that if you know many of these reasons, then it will help you to create proposals which have a greater probability of getting into the particular system you are applying for. And as I have mentioned before, you write research proposals for soliciting funds from grants bodies to do your research in a particular institution or you write research proposals to bodies which give fellowships for sabbaticals, postdoctoral visits, summer visits and so on. Or you may be writing a research proposal to your own university to get a small grant, to get a startup grant or to get permission to do your PhD or postdoctoral research. Now the first reason for proposals getting rejected is that the theme is not perceived to be significant. And here what this means in simpler terms is that you are not doing fashionable research. So again this is something to keep in mind is that there are certain tides which are there in the research community and there is a ebb and flow in terms of the different research subjects. So typically a research proposal is reviewed by people who are experts in the field. And then there is a chairperson of this selection committee who decides on the research proposal. So essentially these people are also part of the larger social system. And therefore they are also motivated by certain personal predilections toward what is a hot topic today, what is an important topic and so on. So for example, at the time of meeting, making this video, subjects such as climate change, nanotechnology, solar panels, battery technology, low noise situations, all these have become very important. And therefore, if your proposal is in one of these areas, it's likely to get more traction than if it is in a field which may be a very basic field but which may not be of interest to many people such as making a numerical method faster or developing some kind of program for solving a certain engineering problem. Now the second aspect is that while your work may be on a good theme, the problem which you have proposed is not a significant problem. The next possibility is that you have given too many details about your proposal. So you, you can sometimes go to the extent of giving out your entire research plan in a proposal. And sometimes when people see the entire research plan, they don't find it too attractive. So what you have actually done is you have satiated their desire to know about your research. So now they know your whole story and so they are not interested in your story. So again, the trick here is to give enough details to make them want more, but not to reveal all. Now the next issue could be that you have been guilty of too much modesty or maybe too much megalomania. So both these are possible in some cases. So again, this is something to keep in mind. One more reason could be that you have not given a hypothesis which can be tested. The next reason is that you may have given too many hypotheses and this is causing confusion in the mind of the referees. Also some people give too many goals and their problem is simply too big. So again the referees may feel that this is not possible to do within the given time and by the persons and by the level of funding which the person has asked. So they also have to keep in mind about the capability of the people to deliver on the work they have promised. So they are also held responsible by their own bosses about the proposal. So if they have given out money, then they have to ensure to their bosses that this money resulted in certain number of publications, some technical report, some patent, some product, some prototype. And if this doesn't happen, then they are also held liable for this situation. One more thing could be that your methods are not good. And sometimes the proposal may be excellent, but you may have selected a 
simplistic or superficial method to solve this problem and then the proposal falls flat. It could also be that experiments are not well designed. So this is sometimes the case that a proposal rests on experiments and when somebody reads this experimental design carefully, they find that there are issues typically relating to uncertainty which have not been looked at very carefully. Sometime you may have presented too much big picture vision of a problem. Sometime the reverse is true that it may be too much of a tunnel vision of the problem. Now these are some of the re reasons for rejection. Now I will look at reasons which are typically considered very bad and should not be made in a proposal, but sometimes people make them. For example, typos. So again, proofread the proposal very carefully. People also provide wrong references. So sometimes there may be a misnumbering of re references. So you may be saying Smith bracket seven in your proposal and when people go to scene number seven, they find somebody else there. So again, these kind of mistakes are extremely troubling to the people. And what many people don't realize, especially neophyte researchers, is that people who review these kind of documents, they are extremely meticulous and sensitive to mistakes. So they may often extrapolate from one simple mistake that your entire capability of research may be lacking and you may not be a meticulous person. So again, they will probably just re reject a proposal because of this. But then they may not say this is the cause. They may simply say that the proposal is not carefully written. Then one more reason I have seen proposals get rejected is not strictly following page guidelines. And this is something to keep in mind very much that if they have mentioned five pages or three pages or 15 pages, do not exceed the page guideline and do not go below the page guideline also. So maybe little bit is possible, but the best possibility is if they ask for five page maximum, present a five page proposal. Follow all the rules. So if they have asked for a partner from the corporate world or they have asked you to get a minority partner from a different institution or a minority university, then these are very important to keep in mind because if these are not there, then your proposal will not make the short list and so is liable to be rejected. Now, finally, one important thing to remember is that just like journal papers, proposals are also reviewed in a manner which is not double blind. That means the referees know who you are, but you do not know who are the referees. So this situation means that the referees have disproportionate power on you. And therefore, it's very important to be friendly and generally collegial towards your entire network because you do not know who are the people who are going to get the proposal to review. And these people can make a huge impact in your research career. So again, of course, the people are going to be quite fair in the way they look at the proposal because they are professionals. But keep in mind that certain biases develop if people are perceived to be megalomaniacal in their behavior. Now, how you have done past proposals is also something which is very important. So there is a track record of people and typically in a proposal, you also mention how or what are the previous proposals which you have done. So very often the program committee chairman who essentially is in charge for reviewing the proposal may know of the particular bodies which have funded your work and may actually seek out information regarding your performance in these proposals and that may have a bearing on your current proposal. So this is also something to keep in mind when you are applying for proposals is that slowly build up your credibility by completing proposals one by one and do not take on a plethora of work and then fail to deliver on those because that may be terminal for your research career. So these are some of the points I had today for you about why research proposals typically get rejected and this rejection rate is quite high. So again, if you keep some of these aspects in mind, then possibly the chances of your proposal getting through is more. And then again, it will also be there that the proposal will be judged more on its merit rather than on some tangential issue, which is not really relevant to the major theme of the proposal. So this is something which is very important to keep in mind.
So I hope this video was useful to you and stay tuned for more videos on these subjects and more. Thank you very much.